Round Base Zombies is back, and we're picking up the Dark Aether storyline where we left it. We're excited to announce that there will be two brand new maps available at launch, with a curated mix of fan favorite features and new elements to discover. For those new to Zombies, it's our unique take on the cooperative horde mode, where every map is packed full of powerful weapons and upgrades, deadly enemies, and tons of secrets to uncover. The legacy of Zombies is incredibly important to Treyarch, and we are so proud of what the mode is bringing to players in Black Ops 6. As you've heard today, the innovations and in movement systems will also be coming to Zombies. Plus, there are many additional Zombie-specific features, both new and returning. This is going to be a truly epic return for round based Zombies. Be on the lookout for more intel coming later this year. So that's what we got from the reveal stream, but it turns out there's actually more detail that we can uncover here. A, from just looking at the gameplay a bit more deeply, but B, also from other material that has released while the stream was going on. So first of all, if we skim to the end here, these four characters, these were also posted on the Steam store, and it turns out that this is Weaver, who you will know. This is Grey from Cold War. That's Carver. And this woman on the left-hand side is who some people thought was Scarlet Rhodes because we got a teaser which was basically a blurry piece of this gameplay, okay? And people were thinking that the red jacket meant that it was Scarlet because she also has short hair. It's not Scarlet. She's called Maya or Maya, I guess, however you pronounce it. Uh, but that means that we are getting a set crew and this has been confirmed by creators, I guess, that got invited to Treyarch to play Black Ops 6 early. I wasn't invited, so I didn't know that this happened, but apparently they have confirmed that her name is Maya, and uh, Treyarch has since confirmed that, yes, it is a set crew. What does this mean? Well, we will still be able to play as operators, so these four are not going to be the only people that you can potentially see in Zombies, but you're going to be able to opt in to play as one of these four, and then you'll get specific story quotes that are the old system of, of character dialogue that we've all been kind of pleading to come back for over the last several years. So, that's good news. That is good news that we are seeing a non-operator system return, at least in some capacity. It's an opt-in, but it's still, it's great. I mean, it's sort of the best of both worlds in some ways, so I am absolutely in favor of that change. So it's a set crew. It's quite interesting that Weaver, Grey, and Carver are here because we obviously saw them imprisoned at the end of Cold War, and so this game, presumably several years later, seeing as at the end of Cold War, Peck did the five years later thing, this will probably start off with them having a bit of dialogue between each other, saying, yeah, I mean, this is how we got out of jail, and kind of giving us some exposition. So that should be something to look out for as well. Now, there are several things that I want to sort of point out here. Some of these are very small things. Some of them are bigger things. So for example, there's some kind of electricity in the back there, and it's just really calling out to me. I don't know what that is, but something that I'm interested to explore once we get into that room. And this kind of looks like a perk machine to me. Very hard to see, obviously, but kind of looks like it. It's also confirmed that we're going to be getting two round-based maps on launch, so this is only one of the maps. I gotta say, this logo that we get is so juicy. I think that that is a really lovely Zombies logo. Kind of looks like a modernized version a little bit of what we've seen in the past. Well, still just looking awesome, so big fan of that. And as we talked about even just a few days ago in one of my leak videos, and if you missed it, make sure to subscribe now so you don't miss those in the future, but this is the island map. So what I was talking about in that video is saying that it would make sense for this to be an island because on an island you can get a sense of scale, like exploring the whole island while still having it be relatively contained, like it doesn't need to be the entire continent in order for you to kind of feel like you're really roaming around a lot of open space, like an entire island is just always going to feel big, right? Like, even on Zetsubo, we're not exploring the entire island. So, cool to see that the island sort of ideas and the leaks that we had there are indeed coming to pass. This part of the island is really giving me, like, Call of Duty World at War battery vibes, I think that was the name of the map. And you've got this massive cannon as well, and this is something that we saw in that other clip, so we'll come back to that in just a second and dig through that clip in a bit more detail. I also really love the fact that they've got this sort of zoom-through shot that they've got going here, because they've confirmed that theatre mode is returning in the game, and this feels quite theatre mode-y, like this feels like a theatre mode dolly cam shot, so I kind of wonder if we're going to have theatre in zombies as well. I really hope so, that would be amazing, but somewhat TBD at this point, we will see. And I think it's also worth paying a little bit of attention to what everyone's wearing and the guns that they have. So this is a 74U type weapon. Uh, we've got some other ARs on the right-hand side here. This one's more of an LMG, actually. And then this is the shotgun that no doubt is going to end up being the meta shotgun as we play through the game. Quite cool that they just chose regular guns here. I'm glad they didn't just choose, like, Mastercrafts or something and make it look almost 
too arcadey. I think that a little bit of realism here is actually somewhat appreciated. It feels a little bit feels a little bit more like they're not just trying to milk us for microtransactions straight out of the gate. And also, it's really interesting looking at all the different zombie types. So you've got these yellow hazmat suit zombies, which make me think that maybe on this island there's some kind of Nova 6 experimentation happening. Like this is another one. He's actually got a gas mask on and the full yellow suit. So it'd be interesting to see if Nova 6 does play a part in this game or if this is just Ethereum experimentation that's happening on this Terminus Island. And also I want your opinion on the left-hand side here, this thing that we're seeing. Is that like a speed cola machine? Or like what exactly is that? Because it's got this, this green little top to it, but I'm wondering if it's just like a little bucket or if it's actually something a little bit more interesting. If we scrub through some of the earlier parts of the trailer, we see some more zombie types here. So once again, you've got yellow hazmat dude, and he's got a blue collar. Almost looks like a shock collar. I don't think it is, but kind of looks a little bit like that. So we've got this little fatso over here. I kind of wonder if that's going to be a new enemy type, because it's just such a different silhouette to a lot of the other zombies. So we might be being chased by the kind of big boys at some point in this game. And when what I'm assuming is Carver is running through this room here... This bit of purple that we see in the bottom left is very reminiscent of the sort of stuff that we saw in Cold War. So much of their overall etherification or dark etherification of the play space, like we saw in D-Machine, for instance, is definitely going to be coming back. That's just going to be an arrow pointing us in the right direction. But interestingly, we know that Gobblegums are returning now. And obviously there's this machine in the back right here, which I don't think is special. It could be an Intel machine potentially, but sort of hard to say. But the fact that there's going to be this sort of dark ether writing and presumably Dr. Monty's influence is back now. And there are these cells as well, which is pretty interesting. The sort of terminus holding cells. But that makes me wonder, right, from a story perspective, how are they going to be meshing Dr. Monty and the vanquishing of Dr. Monty in the ether story with Dr. Monty's gumballs, presumably, and then the new dark ether presence, which seems to have sort of overridden much of that stuff. That's just going to be an interesting challenge for them to kind of deal with from a narrative perspective. And some of this also is them really trying to showcase some of the new movement systems that they've got in place. So obviously we've got a slide happening here, but then someone is lying down on their back and they've been sort of scooting backwards and shooting. And so you can see their legs out in front of them, it looks like. I don't think this is a downed player. I think the zombies wouldn't be coming towards them in this way if they were a downed player. So I think that they're just kind of on a little scoot backwards there. And also something that I think is worth pointing out is that it looks like this character thing is maybe using a flamethrower. So if I go back and forth in the gameplay here, you can see the beam rotate. It really does look like a flamethrower. So flamethrower zombies might be a thing or that's a player using a flamethrower. It's kind of strange because as you can see, as I go through the clip, the zombies lift into the air. And one of them actually just disappears, like there, before, after, <laughs> before, after. It's kind of a weird glitch that's happening in the background visuals. So I don't know exactly what the deal is, but the fact that it appears that there's some kind of flamethrower being used and it's maybe causing some kind of ignition here is a cool little detail that I think would be uh, worthwhile me pointing out and, and sort of showcasing for you guys. And there's a big boom as well. So maybe it is a zombie and maybe you can blow up the backpack of the zombie to cause it to explode and cause all these fireworks. And then we see this trap and this is actually weirdly a trap that was leaked. So this trap was talked about, a deck cannon trap was talked about months and months ago at this point. Uh, and so to see it in the trailer here is sort of no surprise. Seems to be firing dark ether energy. And I kind of have to wonder, like, what exactly are they building this for? Like, why have they built a dark ether cannon in this way? What could possibly be in the water nearby? Like, what kind of kaiju type boss enemy or something could be out there roaming around that would need us to have these sorts of cannons? Like... Surely you don't need those cannons for regular warships. There's got to be some other reason, right? So the key thing here to really sort of focus in on throughout this is number one, obviously it's great that round-based maps are coming back, but number two, it's still very early days and all things accounted for, this is about 12 seconds of gameplay. So it would be really worthwhile maintaining a level head and keeping neutral expectations, I would say, so that we don't end up getting disappointed by over crazy and over enticing marketing campaigns which then lead to disappointment as we've seen several times with games such as call of duty vanguard which had the worst zombies mode in history potentially and then modern warfare 3 which set up really in an exciting way and then ended up disappointing players as soon as like january rolled around pretty much and then from there it was just dead 
So I want us to celebrate the wins here, celebrate the operators being an optional system and having a dedicated named crew with dialogue. That is a really big win. Celebrate the fact that Gobblegums are seemingly earnable in-game and potentially going to be implemented in a way that makes the game more fun. That's even almost a TBD one, so maybe don't celebrate it too crazily just yet. But then also celebrate the fact that round-based is coming back. They're marketing round-based as well. They know that people are excited for it and we're getting two maps on launch. Those are wins is just not reason i would say to pre-order the game smack your money down for the vault edition and go crazy like let's temper our expectations because we've been burned in the past and go forward with the level heads if you're looking forward to more completely honest frank zombies content feedback ideas gameplay breakdowns etc subscribe to the channel i'm trying to hit two mil subs this year it would be great to have you on board for the ride and i'll see you all very soon bye for now